Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to be learning how to make a sprint effect, so strap on your learning hats, this is going to be a bumpy ride. Probably not actually. Alright, here's what it looks like when it's done. We got this really hideous guy, and he can move left and right, and when we pulled in X, he's going to sprint. And there's this kind of uh, fade effect behind him. And he moves faster whenever he's you're holding and run. And then when you let go, he moves normal speed again. So, <clears throat> this is actually not a very difficult thing to do. So I have copied the frame so we can code it. So uh, what you're going to need to do first is throw in the platform movement object because that is what we're going to be using. So um, if you don't know anything about this platform movement object, you should look at some of my other tutorials and learn how to do the basics of the platform movement uh, platforming uh, code and all that. <clears throat> because this is going to be relying on that. So, we have a player. So we have set the player as the platform movement object and I have some controls for left and right as well as the animations. Also we have some scrolling, some simple center the display at the X of our player. <clears throat> so, first thing we're gonna need to do is give our player some variables. Uh, so the first one we're gonna call it um, uh, movement Speed, and the second second one is going to be called um, movement modifier. All right, so the speed is going to be whatever uh, variable you want for the max x velocity. Um, so that's based on the size of your game, the size of your screen, and just whatever you want your player to move like. But we're going to make ours. I don't know. We'll say 500, and then the modifier we're going to start that as one. So, what we're going to need to do is go in here. Here, I'm going to comment this out. Just to add some, some sort of uh, spacing so we can kind of see what was what's the new code. Um, we'll just make it an empty, an empty comment. Alright, so we're going to need to make an always event. So set one up now. And what we're going to do is always set the speed of our, of our um, player to be what this variable is multiplied by the modifier. So, <clears throat> we're going to click on the platform movement object, go to variables, and set the maximum x velocity. And we're going to set that to the value under our player of movement speed. And we're going to multiply that by the value of modifier, which is pretty simple. So now we've got to set up a way to run to change that modifier. So we're going to have that be the X key, but you can have this be whatever you want. So we're gonna say repeat while key is pressed. We're gonna make that the X. Uh, we are going to set the variable under our player. The uh, movement modifier variable is going to be, now this is when you're running, so we're gonna make it uh, four. Now we need to undo that whenever you're not running. So negate, copy that and negate repeat while X is pressed. So this is gonna happen while X is not pressed. And we're gonna set that modifier to one. Now let's give this a test and see if it worked. Okay. That's the normal movement. And if I hold it in, he should sprint. Yep, he goes much faster. Normal movement is actually a little fast. So I'm gonna change his movement speed to be 300. <clears throat> now another thing we're going to do is we are going to change the speed at which he animates to uh, reflect how fast he's going. So to do that, we're going to always set the animation speed, which is under change speed of animation, and we're going to set it to be the value of movement speed times modifier. And we're going to multiply this by less than 1 because we don't want him to animate that quickly. So we're going to do this by multiply by 0 0.1. I think that should do it. Okay, so that's the normal movement. And when we hold and run, he animates much quicker. And you can play around with those numbers to kind of get something you like. All right, now we're going to add our uh, little fade effect. So to do that, we need to essentially copy our player. So copy the player, uh, clone him. Oh, 
Wait, is that right? Am I cloning him? Yeah, okay. Clone him and rename him to, I don't know, whatever you want. We're going to call it the player fade. And this is going to need a variable. Let's delete that. Uh, we're going to rename this variable to um, trans. Because <clears throat> we're going to make this semi-transparent parent and destroy it. We also need to go into here and change all of the animation um, speeds to zero because we do not want this to animate because we're going to be setting the animation uh, frame to match the animation frame that was active whenever this gets pasted. So make sure those are all zero. Alright, this needs a behavior, so add a behavior. Also we don't want to create this at start. So go to the properties and uncheck create at start. Alright, so Go to your player fade behavior and we're going to edit this. Alright, so we're going to always set it so that the semi-transparency, which is under effects, compatibility, set semi-transparency, is equal to the value of trans. And we are always going to add 5 to trans. And whenever trans has surpassed a certain value, we're going to check... Uh, Alter value, compare, trans. When trans is greater than 180, we're going to destroy this thing here. Bam. Okay, <clears throat> now we need to create this. So, um, how are we gonna do this? This is, okay, we need to, we only create this whenever you're running. So we'll just say, whenever the alterable value of movement modifier is greater than one, meaning he is running or you have because you can add this modifier like it, it, not just when you run you could have a power up or something that would multiply this modifier and it would make it move faster so if you had like a modifier of 10 whenever you grab some fast boots you would you'd be moving pretty quick so whenever that happens whenever you have a uh, faster than one movement you are going to be having these this sort of blur effect happen anyway so uh, whenever the movement modifier is greater than one we are going to create this object the player fade. We're going to create it relative to the player. Now we got to do some stuff to this. We need to change the direction of it to be, click on the one plus one, we're going to uh, set the direction to be the same direction as the player. So click on the player, it's under animation, current direction value. That'll grab the direction. Now we need to set the animation. So we're going to change the animation sequence, yeah. No, yes, animation sequence. We're gonna use a calculation and we're gonna pull the animation sequence off the player. So that is under animation, current animation value. And then we want to uh, change the animation frame. So we're going to grab the animation, change animation frame, and we're gonna set that to be the current value. No, no, the current animation uh, frame, current frame. That'll grab the current animation frame. Let's make sure this is in the right order. So we create it, set the direction to the direction of the player, change the animation sequence to the animation of the player, and force animation frame to image. Um, I'm missing something, I think. Set direction. I think that, no? Okay, I think we're gonna test it. I think this is good. No, it's not doing anything. Did I not create it? Create player fade. Okay, create player fade. At player, set direction to direction of player, and set animation sequence to animation number. Huh? Something went wrong. Let's find out. Oh, trans started at 300. Set trans to zero. What was happening is it's creating them. There we go. It was creating them and, um, that's kind of mesmerizing. It was creating them and then destroying them instantly because the trans, the transparency value was starting at 300. Oh yeah, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to set the position of this trans uh, parent object to be behind the player. So back to where we created, we want to set the position. I knew I was missing something. Um, 
no, the order, sorry. And we're gonna move it behind an object and we're gonna move it behind the player object. Okay, let's try this out. And there's one more thing we need to do. Um, this is, we are spawning this consistently every time it loops the code loops it's creating another one as long as you are running so we are going to kind of slow this down a bit so we're going to insert a timer event and we're going to say every and we're going to make this mm, 30 milliseconds so it's only going to create one of these objects every 30 milliseconds that's not nope we need more than that let's make it every 10 better. I think we can do a little better. Let's make it every five. And yeah, I like that. Okay, well that sums it up. It's really not that hard. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a message for me and I will try to get back to you. I apologize uh, to all you people who are leaving messages that I'm, I'm not able to get back to you. I'm pretty busy, but I do try to check in every now and then and help you guys out. So that concludes our tutorial on how to make a sprint. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you all later.